So today we come together to pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace and the love of God be always with you. And with your spirit. As we gather today, we gather to celebrate our Turi, I can never pronounce Turi, Turi Second Sunday in Ordinary Time. So as we gather, we come as humans recognizing that we need grace, gra the, the grace of God in our lives to be able to go to heaven to be able to prepare two hearts and welcome the bridegroom. So as we gather today, let us close our eyes for a moment and let us recognize that we need God in our lives. Lord Jesus, you are the image of our invisible God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the true bread from, he from heaven. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our hope. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Now let us unite our voices and hearts to give praise and glory to our God, saying, Glory, glory to God, God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. As we gather today, we offer our mass and prayers in a very special way for all of our veterans, for all those who have served and who continue to serve in the armed forces. We thank God for their willingness to defend our freedom, to defend, to defend justice, not only here in our country, but around the world. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her, and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care, because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways, and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. My soul is thirsting for you. O oh God, you are my God, whom I seek. For you my flesh pines and my soul thirsts, like the earth parched, lifeless, and without water. My, my soul is thirsting for you, O oh my Lord, my God. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary, to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you, my Lord, my God. Thus will I bless you while I live, 
Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied. And with exultant lips, my mouth shall praise you. My, my soul is thirsty for you, you my Lord, Lord, my God. God. I will remember you upon my couch, and through the night watches I will meditate on you. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings I shout for joy. My soul is thirsty for you, my Lord, my God. A reading from the letter, first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God through Jesus. Bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Matthew, Glory to you, Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out, went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Now since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise one replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and for you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. So while they went out to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes when we are teaching uh, a religious education, religious education to our kids, uh, to our children, uh, Erin and us, we try to use uh, songs uh, put together with uh, the, the theme of the class so that uh, we find different ways for the little kids uh, to, to get the message. If it's not with the words, if it's not with the prayers, maybe sometimes it's with a little song. And I think that's what uh, people, catechists did when I went to uh, 
when I took religious education and I prepared uh, to receive the sacraments back home. And I remember there was a song uh, that we used to sing as little kids uh, for, to remember uh, what we're celebrating today or the message of the gospel today. And it was uh, something like, yo tengo que estar listo para cuando Cristo venga. Yo tengo que estar listo para cuando Cristo venga. Yo tengo que estar listo para cuando Cristo venga y me dé la y me dé el premio de la gloria o algo así era. Basically, uh, the song it just repeated over and over and over. I want to be ready when the bridegroom comes. I want to be ready when the bridegroom comes. And it was a reminder for us of what we uh, celebrate today and we hear in the gospel. As we approach the end of the liturgical year, we're going to hear more often about the end of times. We're going to hear more often about that second promise of the parousia when Jesus is going to come. And today, uh, the gospel is reminding us that we all have to be prepared because we don't know the time, we don't know the hour, but we know that God is going to come and we have that beautiful Christian uh, anticipation of receiving and welcoming Jesus back into our lives. A couple of months ago, uh, when all this uh, uh, quarantine started, uh, I think it was like March, uh, I was talking to a few people and many of them were asking uh, if this was the end of times if this was really the end of the world, because uh, we had no idea about this virus and how to control it, and it was just uh, spreading so fast uh, around the world, and so many people were afraid and were anxious about it. And that's the problem uh, sometimes, I think, that's the problem sometimes when we think about the end of times and the end of the world. We get uh, anxious, we get afraid, and we don't want it to come. As Christians, we have to remember, that's not how we see the end of the world. We do not see it with anxiety. We do not see it with fear. On the other hand, we see it with, an, with anticipation because we know that we uh, have been chosen by God uh, to welcome him again among us and to have this very special relationship with him. Today, St. Paul, uh, in the second reading, was reminding us that we as Christians have not to live in fear, not only for when our, our lives in this world ends, uh, because we Christians are people of hope. We hope in the promises of eternal life. We believe that one day we are going to uh, live uh, the, in, the, in the fullness of the love of God with him in heaven. We are people of hope. So we are people who are not afraid or anxious. We are people who make sure that we prepare to, with anticipation for the second coming of our Lord. Now, that's the thing. How do we prepare? Uh, today, as we hear this uh, beautiful image of Jesus, of the bridegroom coming uh, uh, to the feast, it's kind of a strange for us because usually our weddings uh, are very short. Usually, we have the celebration here in church. It, la it lasts about an hour. And then we go to the reception and, I don't know, we have something to eat and then we dance for a little bit. We have the cake and then everybody goes home. And the, uh, the bridegroom and the bride uh, usually go on into their honeymoon and they move to their house and we don't see them until a week later or so. Uh, and that's what our weddings are like. Weddings in the time of Jesus were a little bit different. There were basically two parts of the wedding. Uh, the first part when they got enthroned and um, even though they did not live together, they, uh, they, it was considered part of the marriage, the first part of the marriage. And the second part, when uh, the bride was ready and the bridegroom were ready to live together, uh, maybe he, uh, he already had all the money he needed to pay, to pay for the, how do you call that? Dowry. The dowry. Uh, and he then could finally go back uh, to the bride's uh, house and make all the, all the arrangements. And then they will come back to his house as a couple. And that's when people will come and celebrate. And usually the celebration lasted for, lasted for a couple of days. And these virgins, uh, when uh, the bridegroom and the bride were coming back to the house, were the ones who, with their lambs, were supposed to lead them into the party and have the celebration. So uh, that's what uh, basically uh, the story in the gospel is talking about. 
And what it's important for us to remember is that these uh, virgins had uh, oil. They, they had these lamps filled with oil. And that's how we Christians prepare with anticipation for the coming of the Lord. Not with fear and not with anxiety, but we prepare by filling our hearts, by filling our lives with hope, knowing that God has promised us eternal life. We fill our, uh, our lives with faith, knowing that we are his children. We fill our lives, uh, uh, prepare our lives with joy, knowing that uh, this anticipation of the second coming, it's gonna be something beautiful. It's gonna be something amazing. There is nothing better than that. We prepare our lives by filling our hearts and our lives with peace and reconciliation, knowing that God is our Lord and King. So today we gather as, uh, as people of hope. Today we gather with anticipation for the second coming, knowing that God has promised us eternal life with him. So let us stand. And as we gather as people of hope and faith, let us profess our faith in God, saying, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial to the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified by the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We come together today in the hope that comes from Christ and his promises. So let us present to God all of our prayers and needs. Let us pray that the church may have the wisdom to live attentively for the presence of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, especially our veterans and the many names we have in our book of life, may enjoy eternal life in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may help us work for peace, reconciliation, and lasting justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our brothers and sisters in Guatemala may feel our love and support, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those who are sick, sad, depressed, or lonely may receive healing and hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of our veterans and all those who place their lives for the service of others may be protected and blessed by God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now I invite you to close your eyes for a moment and in the silence of your hearts, present to God your own prayers and needs. All of these prayers we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Wonderful God, we thank you for the many blessings you have given us. 
we thank you for this beautiful country. Please give us the peace, hope, freedom, and dignity that our veterans have defended. Today we place all of our prayers on your holy altar through the intercession of our Lady Fatima and Blessed Emily Gamelin, and in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, till you become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, till you become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash our iniquities and cleanse us from our sins. Now let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his O Lord, look with favor upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation. And having filled her with life by the power of your Holy Spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. And manifesting the covenant of your love, your church dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom, and shines bright as the sign of faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promise will last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church as one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son Jesus present here in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for his disciples and now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he was to suffer, he took bread and said a blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of eternal blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been entrusted to us, and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church of Spokane by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bonds of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, uh, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by the strife and conflict, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity, peace, and concord. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. In a very special way we pray for all the names we have in our book of life. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to each one of us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her husband Saint Joseph, with the Apostles and Martyrs, Blessed Emily Gamelin, and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now, as brothers and sisters who wait with anticipation the second coming of our Lord, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and save from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. To the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit.
Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world, world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. O Lord, nourished by this sacred gift, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy, that by the putting forth of your Holy Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you heard today, this Mass, we offer it in a very special way for all of our veterans. I think on Wednesday we celebrate Veterans Day, and today is the Sunday closest to it. Uh, usually, our kids uh, at All Saints uh, uh, prepare a little uh, they have posters usually uh, where they have the names of all of our veterans and their pictures. And then uh, we have a special mass for them here at Our Lady of Fatima. And then the kids prepare a, a small reception downstairs for them. Unfortunately, this year we're not gonna be able to uh, have that. However, we wanna uh, still honor and uh, show our gratitude uh, and appreciation to all of our veterans. So the kids, uh, uh, the families at the school have prepared a little, uh, a short video uh, in honor of our veterans. So I'm gonna send the link uh, on Veterans uh, Day uh, so that you can uh, join us in thanking, in gratitude uh, for our veterans. We were talking at the homily time, uh, how, uh, how do we prepare for the second coming of the Lord? What do we have to fill our lives with? And I think one of the things that we, one of the ways for us to prepare uh, for the coming of the Lord and one of the ways for us to fill our lives with is with the goodness of the children of God, the goodness of human life. 
And I think a good example of that is our veterans. Not only those veterans who have willed uh, to die for justice and peace and freedom, but how many uh, men and women still nowadays uh, choose uh, to give up their lives for our safety, for our freedom, for our protection. What a beautiful thing to see that. We see it on this altar, we see it uh, as an example in our veterans. Thank you so much, we appreciate all that. So now let us go in peace to share with others all the love that God has given us, our mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us today, have a beautiful weekend.